Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez and before I get started on this video, I just want to let you guys know um, Thank you. I just want to say thank you because I haven't uploaded in I think almost two months now um, Yeah, there, there were some things going on. I had surgery. I'm totally fine now So you shouldn't worry about that at all, but I just want to say thank you guys for being so patient Okay, so now we can start this video. This video is another episode of my building the shot series If you guys are not familiar with what that is, it's a series that I started recently where I go through the step-by-step -step process on how I created a photo that I'm going to be highlighting in every single episode. I do my best to describe every single step and the things that I did and adjusted to end up with that final result. I've already done a couple of episodes in the series going over the images that are on the screen right now. So in case you want to see how I took those shots, you can check out those videos by either checking out the description area below because I'll leave links to the videos there or clicking in the top right corner. I'm looking at my screen right now. The top right corner of the screen for a playlist that has all of the videos there as well. The videos in this series are actually text-based tutorials that I make first and share on my Instagram page at FJH Photo. Definitely worth checking out. I have nothing but educational content on there. And I also share it on my Facebook lighting group called Learn to Light, an off-camera flash lighting community. Again, that community is nothing but uh, learning off-camera flash. So if you guys are interested in doing that, definitely join the group or follow me on my Instagram page at FJH Photo. Once again, I share these tutorials. I make these tutorials first and share them in both those areas so you guys can check out future tutorials there first. I always welcome feedback on how to make these videos even better. And one thing that you guys wanted to know about was the gear choices that I made in regards to the camera lens and the lighting gear. One thing I want to do is kind of just shy away from talking about the camera gear and lens and stuff because I do want to keep these tutorials more about the lighting because lighting is very very important so i'm going to go ahead and just talk about briefly or talk briefly about the lens and the camera and talk more about the lighting so this is the setup that i used to take the picture it's the sony 85 fe 1.8 it's a it's an amazing sony lens and i highly recommend it. it's full frame and it's one of sony's hidden gems i want to say because it's only 550 dollars and i think some people perceive the lower price as being cheaper or as a cheap lens but I've used the Sony 85 1.4 G Master lens and I've used this one and I sold the G Master to get a Sigma Art 105 1.4 and I kept this one because it's it's definitely worth it. It focuses faster, it's lighter, and it's just really worth it. I actually bring this whenever I travel because it's perfect for portraits. So I highly recommend that lens. The camera is the Sony a7R 3 I use the a7R series and the Sony cameras because I like all that resolution to, to work with. It's 42 megapixels. Um, and this is actually the transmitter for the light. It's the Godox uh, X Pro transmitter, which Adorama calls the R2 Pro transmitter. It's the Sony version. The difference between this one and the previous model, the non-pro, is that this doesn't have a hot shoe on top, and it's a little bit simpler to adjust the power. It's actually a lot simpler to adjust the power, and it's a lot easier to work with in terms of groups of lights. This is the light that I use to take this picture. It's the Godox 8400 Pro, and it's my favorite strobe by Godox right now because it offers a lot of power, 400 watts of power, it's the pro model, so it has increased color accuracy, very fast recycle times. It has a good amount of battery life, and it's not too heavy, um, and it's very small, so it's easy for, um, for being portable. It's not easy for being portable, it's portable. So yeah, this is without the battery, so it's even smaller. And without this mount here, it actually comes with a Godox mount, but it comes with a Bowens mount, so you can attach to it. But you can also attach a Profoto mount, or an Elecron mount in case you guys have those modifiers and you want to use this light, you can do so. So yeah, this is the light that I highly recommend right now, the Godox 8400 Pro. It's the light that I use to take this picture and it's one that I've been using a lot lately. Oh yeah, and it has this very bright mind lamp. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I just now realized that I don't think I pulled the image that I'm going to be talking about on the screen yet. So let me go ahead and do that now. That's the image that I'm going to be talking about today. And now let me go over the modifier real quick which is the 34-inch Beauty Dish by Adorama, their glow line. I have the 34-inch with the silver interior, even though I recommend the white interior because that's going to have a little bit softer light. Even though this modifier doesn't have the biggest size to work with, and usually softer light requires bigger modifiers, the 34-inch is a modifier that you have to work with, provide really nice soft light, and the material that is used on the outer um, part of the modifier is very, very sturdy. It's very, very durable. So I highly recommend it in case you guys need a durable modifier or you just want a nice modifier that's portable, durable, and has soft light. It comes with two diffusion panels and a reflector plate. So in case you want to just use the reflector plate, you can do so. Or in case you want to use the reflector plate and both diffusions, you know, you can do whatever you want. I, use, I tend to use it with just the two diffusion panels, but I have the reflector plate 
like on standby in a bag somewhere nearby. So in case I just want to use that, it's actually only $79 right now. So in case you guys want to get a great modifier that doesn't cost a lot, then this is one that I highly recommend. Right now, the 8400 Pro is my favorite strobe and the 34 inch Beauty Dish is my favorite modifier. Okay, so now that I've gone over the gear, let me go ahead and actually talk about how I created this shot right here. This is the end result, but this shot right here is how I started to take the photo. This shot is nothing but natural light. There's no flash going on here. And it's actually pretty close to how our eyes were seeing the scene while we're there at that location. And one thing that I did want to kind of show you guys is just a little bit of errors that I made in the shot and, and why I ended up correcting them. One thing specifically on the bottom of the image you can see, you can see is that I actually cropped off her fingers. That's something that you don't want to do. You either want to have, you know, a closer crop or, you know, take a step back and have a little bit more of the scene and not crop her fingers. In the next shot, what I do is take a step back and I also adjust my angle. Uh, one thing that's going on in this shot that I didn't do so much in the next one is that there's a lot of flaring and a lot of sunlight kind of peeking into the shot on the right side. I like it in this shot because of the nice colors that it has, but it's a little bit overbearing. Some people might consider that overbearing, but one thing in the next shot that I do is not only take a step back, but I kind of just position the sunlight to be in a different area that's a little bit less obtrusive. So let me go ahead and just show you guys the next shot, which is this one right here. These are the exact same settings. One thing that you might notice between the last shot and this shot is that there's more contrast in this shot. And that's because that sunlight is not peeking so much into the lens. Usually when you have that sunlight going directly into the lens, you you experience a lot of that less contrast or what's the opposite of less contrast. Anyways, you'll experience less contrast. And usually when the lights um, out of the, uh, the lens, you'll experience more contrast. So you can see that in this shot, more contrast, this one, less contrast. Another thing that you'll, you'll see is that I did take that step back, like I mentioned, but also the angle is a little bit higher. So you can see that the background is less apparent. And that's something that I thought I wanted here, but I ended up changing in the very next shot. So the reason why I wanted to change that angle is because in this shot, I wanted more natural light. And with that sky showing up more in the shot, if I went to a lower angle, for example, then that sky would be just kind of too bright. And I didn't want that. I wanted the exposures to be more even. And when it comes to that area of the ground and a little bit towards the bottom of the trees, the, the sunlight was a lot less intense. So the exposures were a lot closer. So in other words, the sky is very bright. The ground's a little bit darker. So I was going for more even exposures, which is the shot here. Obviously her exposure on her face and stuff is not too bright. And it's something that I intentionally did because in post-processing, I'll probably bring up the exposure on her face. And this shot is one that I actually really like. So I do want to make an editing video on that. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the description area or the comment section below. This shot is pretty much the same as the last one, except for the adjustments that I made myself which was adjusting my position so that the sunlight wasn't on that right side and is now on top of her in the top there. Um, I also went to a higher angle so that the exposures were closer together. And I you know, took a step back so that I wasn't cropping any part. But after I took this shot, I realized that I wanna get the exact opposite. I wanna get more of that sky in the background. So in the next shot, what I do, and I'm gonna just show you guys, this is the next shot right here. So what you can see, what I did is I went at a lower angle to get a lot of that sky in the background. And I actually did the opposite of what, did, what I did previously, which is, you know, take a step back. I actually took a, took a little bit step, took a little bit, took a little step closer, which ended up in this shot right here. Obviously you can see that the exposure is darker as well. I went from one 500th of a second on that last shot, this one right here, to one 2500th in this shot right here. So that's why she's a lot darker and why the sky is, is exposed like that. If I expose this guy at 500th of a second, then it'd be a lot brighter and you also would see less color. So this is the shot at 2500th. But again, I got closer. Um, I changed the positioning of this where the sunlight was. So there were some things that I felt like could be improved from this shot. So um, I do improve them uh, a little bit later. But one thing that is going wrong in this shot in my head is her pose, her right hand. I'm not a fan of how it was positioned. It felt like it was just breaking or something. It, just, it was just too odd. I, f I usually go for more relaxed poses. So in this shot here, I didn't adjust that yet because I didn't realize yet. But after this shot with no flash, I added flash, which ended up in this shot. This is, I believe is that one thirty second power. Um, so obviously it's too low because she's still not exposed fine. And the pose and pretty much everything is the same except for me going even lower at, at an angle. So there's more sky in the background. And after this shot, 
I went to this shot right here. So I went from a portrait orientation or a landscape orientation to a portrait orientation and I even got lower. So the sunlight is now towards her back and a little bit above her waist right there or at her waist level. So this is the shot that I ended up taking and really liking. So this is the shot that I ended up editing. This is the shot before I edited it in Photoshop. And now what I'm gonna do is show you guys the end result after I edited it, which is right here. And one thing that I wanted to go ahead and do in my videos from now on in the series is not just describe a little bit about the edit, but show you guys step by step exactly how I edited it in Photoshop. So let me go ahead and just store that on the screen right now and go over about, um, go over how I edited the shot. Actually, before I do that, let me go ahead and just show you guys the behind the scenes shot, which is right here. If you guys follow my work, you would know that I like to have fun with my behind the scenes photos. So this is the unlabeled shot and this is the labeled shot. If you guys wanna pause the shot and kind of save it, you can go ahead and do that. I actually have this post on my Instagram so you guys can save the post there as well. And now let me go ahead and just show you guys the edit and Photoshop. Okay, so this is the photo before I did any sort of editing. The very first thing that was bugging me in this shot was the highlight that was right behind her waist. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove that. What I did was a, a mixture of clone stamp with a little bit of adjusting the colors next to the, the fence and her waist. So that was that first area right there. I wanted to remove that highlight because it was just too, it was a bit of a distraction in other words. So I removed that highlight and then I decided to saturate the background. I wanted those colors to be nice and rich. So I saturated that background. It's very subtle, but it's the, uh, the, um, the adjustment is there. Let me just, yeah, there you go, make it bigger. Um, I wanted to kind of just make those background colors more unified. Um, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration going on in the background. If you kind of just focus, you can see a little bit of the greens going on there. So one thing I wanted to do to kind of minimize that and make it less apparent was sample the blue and the orange in the background and paint it over the sky in, in the areas that where those colors were at. So I went ahead and did that. I painted those colors. Let me go ahead and see if I can isolate those colors. I have it at 60%. Let me make it to 100. It's very subtle. It's not so, um, I didn't paint a lot in other words, but that's 60%. I use the background blend or the blending mode of color. So again, it's something that's not too crazy, but it's the, the edit is there. And I also filled in the background with a color fill with a little bit of brown to give a little bit of brownish tones. I do, th do this specifically to not only make, um, make a nice color throughout the image, but also to kind of reduce the contrast a little bit. So that's what I did there. This Dodge and Burn Plus levels, let me go ahead and just show you guys that step by step. So one thing that I highly recommend you do when it comes to editing is make a levels adjustment layer. This darkens the image, but makes the colors richer. So this is something that I really like to do because I love rich colors. So let me go ahead and show you guys before. Okay, so yeah, this is the before and this is the after. So you can see how the, how the image became darker, less contrast or more contrast. And then I went ahead and did a little bit of dodge and burn. So this is the dodge. Let me go ahead and show you guys what exactly I did, which I'm gonna hold down alt and then click on the mask. So that's exactly what I did. This is all the areas that I dodged. And then this is the areas that I burned. Let me go ahead and just take it off, put it back on and then hold alt, click on the mask. This is everything that I burned. So yeah, that's all the dodge and burn plus the levels. Let me go ahead and just take it off and then put it back on so you guys can see how that looked like. I added a little bit of color balance. When it comes to color balance, I just kind of play around with the edit. So it's, I added, I guess, a little bit more reds and magentas in there. Uh, I added a little bit of brightness. This is actually just about 6% of a little bit brighter brightness. Um, I desaturated that car in the background there because I didn't want it to be that colorful. It felt like it was distracting. Um, I took off all of those webs there. That was the most tedious thing about this whole edit. I just felt like they were too distracting, so I wanted to remove them. So I, I removed them with clone sap and the patch tool, and it was very tedious work, but I edited them out because I didn't want them there. Uh, I added the little bit more blue to the pants, removed a little bit of chromatic aberration. That It's very, very, very subtle on the shirt. Um, I also, what's going on here? Oh, a little bit of frequency separation on the skin. Uh, her skin, Marina's skin is very, very nice and soft, but I wanted to remove some kind of different coloration in the skin. So I added a little bit of frequency separation. This is something I recommend doing very minimally because it's easy to go overboard. 
And again, I removed a little bit of blemishes as well. This is something I actually do, I usually do first. So I, I forgot to do that at the end there. Um, I added a little bit of dodge on her right here, a little bit around the corner of her mouth. And then I removed that earring in the back right there because I felt like it was, again, distracting from the subject's face. So that's pretty much the edit. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will be making a lot more and I, I, again, I welcome all the feedback. So yeah, definitely recommend you guys follow this tutorial and follow my videos and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. Also follow me on Instagram and my lighting group on Facebook called Learn to Light and Off-Camera Flash Lighting Community. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next uh, video. Yeah, bye guys.